Thank you, Pastor. I'd like to introduce David Medor. David Medor is founder and owner of US Digital, a company that designs and manufactures high-tech sensors that control motion. David and his wife, Donna, believe that business success includes more than profit. They desire to inspire others to consider conducting business as a steward of Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, David Medor. Thank you. Hi, folks. I want to start out by, well, one, solve a problem. We see some of these tags on top of the tables. Why don't you pull those down so that everybody can see? First step in solving a problem here. Great. Next thing here, I want to introduce my mom and dad. Mom and dad, Gene and Irma Medora, why don't you stand up? <laughs> mom and dad have been married for 64 years. They've ra raced, raced. They raised eight of us kids. I'm right in the middle, and that's my some of my brothers and sisters there at that table there. Virtually all of us, well, minus one who's in Texas, have relocated from Southern California up here 20 years ago. Some more recently, Steve. Glad you're here. I get to tell you about a story, about a journey, how I was enrolled into his service how the Lord got a hold of my heart, and he's been, it's been a very interesting and a fun journey to get to know Christ and to find out what is my role. Each one of us have a story. Each one of us have a role to play, and we interact with each other. We're here on assignment. We're not here for ourselves. One of the key things that is foundational to my life is learning the difference between religion and relationship. We were raised with religion as best we knew how. And that was a respect and a fear for God. But I didn't realize that God isn't just simply on the other side of the universe that you send prayers long distance to, but he is present. There's one thing, I like one scripture here. Let him who boasts, boast about this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness and justice and righteousness on earth. For in these I delight, declares the Lord. Some of you may have seen a movie in the past, Eric Little, he was a runner, and he said, God made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. God made each one of us unique. He made me a problem solver. He made me an inventor. He made me a fellow that just likes to solve problems. And that was something that since I was a little kid, I've enjoyed doing. I didn't quite know how that fit in my role here on earth. It all started with my brother Bob. We had an electric train when I was a little kid. Must be about five or six years old, and Bob was making sparks, sorting out that transformer. That spark sparked something up here, and that spark has never left me. I ended up with a fascination a love for electronics and for inventing and for solving things and trying to figure things out. It has been something that has been a part of my makeup ever since, and it's, it's I guess, identified as a gift. We have an Uncle Harvey who is a gifted artist. You can draw, he can do anything, just whip it out, it look, looks like a photograph. That's a gift, it's not something we earn. Uh, I, the gift that I had was problem solving inventing, and I love it. I feel like a carrot peeler who gets to peel carrots, and I get paid besides. What a deal. We were raised in a Catholic elementary school, and there we, we, we were taught evolution, and I could never figure that out. Evolution, to me, just, I could not get it, because when, I, when you look at a mountain, it kind of looks like a, like a face. You think, well, is, that, is that design? I don't know. But then you look at Mount Rushmore, and you see, that was definitely designed. You see the fingerprints of design. You see the, the handiwork of a creator. Well, in every one of our cells is DNA, and that DNA not only is, is 
has the instructions of how to make that, but the sequence. So when I was taught evolution, and then they say, okay, time to change subjects, now we're gonna talk about religion. I thought, didn't you just say? And I couldn't quite put that together. So it was a, a search to figure out what is the truth? Why are we here? What is the point? And yet, at the same time, I was continuing to learn electronics. I loved it. My favorite day was trash day because I could go out trash hunting and bring back all this stuff in my big baskets on my bike. I became one of the youngest ham radio operators and built the stuff in my garage and learned how not to make stuff and how to make, make stuff. My, so I can still hear my mom saying, Dave, listen up the TV again. <laughs> and I was. My, when I was 17, I thought, I'd like to work in electronics. And I went down to a little TV repair shop, Gary's TV, and I said, I'd like to work here. He said, how old are you? I said, I'm 17. He said, come back when you're 18. So I came back on my 18th birthday, and he hired me. And I thought, this is great. I get paid besides. I don't care what they pay me. What I learned in there is that the laws of physics always make sense. And it helped to have an order understand there's an order to the universe, there's a purpose behind it. One of the things that I learned that mom taught me when, I was, when, I, when we were kids, she taught it, to all, taught it to all of us, we lived out in the country, I was one of eight kids, and right next door was nine cousins all the same ages, so we had the greatest hide and seek and tag games in the country there. But mom would often say, don't tell lies, because Mike, our next door cousin, never tells lies. And that had an impact on me, so remember that, remember that mom? Well, it kind of, you don't know how much the words that you share with people are going to impact them, but somehow that sparked something else in me, a love for truth and a respect for truth. And that has been, I guess, one of the foundational things that wanted me to search, what is the truth? <laughs> when I was, I continued to work at that TV repair shop and I wanted to travel the world, I ended up figuring out how to do that. Well, I didn't know anyone else that could travel the world, so I ended up joining the Navy. I figured they travel the world, they pay you besides. I went in, in one and out one door after the other. There's, there's Army, Navy, Marines, and Air Force, and I went in to say, what kind of deal can I get if I just sign up here? The Navy offered nuclear power training and electronics training, or elect, electrical training, and I said, I'll take it. So I ended up joining the Navy, and ended up serving on board nuclear submarines as a nuclear-trained electrician, and it was a, a fabulous experience. In the process of uh, just going through boot camp in the Navy, that hunger to find out what is the truth uh, took on kind of a let's find out um, mode for me. I remember going out on Sundays, I could either stay back in the barracks and clean, or I could go out and go, go to church. Well, even, even if I didn't have to clean, I still want to go. The way that worked there is guys would hold this sign, wooden stick, white sign, it would say Catholic, Methodist, Presbyterian, whatever. All these guys with all these different signs. And you could get in line behind them and march off to that particular church. And I thought, that's great. I'm going to go to check them all out. So one by one, each Sunday, I went to a different church. I'm, I'm going to figure out what, which one of these churches is the right church is what I was thinking. By the way, the answer is not a right church. The answer is a relationship. But that's what I was, that was my journey there. So I went to church after church there and listened to each one and find, tried to find out what are they saying. And this one church, I actually heard the gospel and did not understand it. They talked about Christ. They talked about the Bible. They talked about how you could accept Christ as your Savior and become a Christian. I didn't know what a real Christian was. I thought we're all Christians because we're, you know, in America. But in reality... What they're asking is, do you want to turn your life over to Christ, which is for everybody? But I thought they're asking, do you want to be a clergyman? Do you want to be a priest or something? I thought, no, I want to be an inventor. I want to be an engineer. <laughs> so I didn't respond. I just didn't get it. I continued on, finally got stationed in Idaho Falls, Idaho, for the nuclear training. And if you wonder what in the world are submarine, nuclear submarines doing in Idaho, well, they built them where there's not going to destroy too many people if it, goes, if it blows up. <laughs> so 
Idaho Falls was the, was the place where we stayed. There wasn't even a base there. 55 miles west of that was, was a little town called Arco. Well, it wasn't a town, it was kind of a base where they built all the nuclear prototypes. They actually are working submarines that are, that are built in these um, water tanks. And you actually go out there and you train on those. You actually uh, run those guys. And that was a f bus ride back and forth, 55 miles every, every morning, 55, 55 miles there, 12 hours on site, 55 miles back. And about this time, I'm thinking, I'm young, I'm single, I'll probably get married someday, probably have kids. They'll grow up and they'll ask the same question I'm asking and won't know the answer. And I thought, well, why don't I find out? Because I don't want them to be in the same spot as me not knowing. So how do I find out? Well, in my understanding, we were already created. I mean, we were not... As a, I, I understand the fingerprints of design. We were created. So the question is, where's the creator? And how did you get to know about him? What's the right church to tell you about him? I didn't even at that point know you could know him. So I thought, well, he knows my thoughts. He knows who I am. He must be aware because he's, he, babies still get born. And they're created just a little miracle. Have you ever had a baby? I have three daughters, wonderful daughters. It's amazing. It's a miracle, that, that whole process of a new life coming into the world. So I thought, oh, Lord, I'm going to pray. God, if you're there, please show me what's the right church. It wasn't even the right prayer. <laughs> but help me not to believe the wrong thing, because I thought I could end up believing. I don't want to end up believing a lie, thinking I got the truth and end up with some counterfeit. So I really prayed, oh, don't let me believe the wrong thing. He listened. Even when you don't pray right, he looks at the heart, and he looks if you're hungry, and he'll find a way to get through. He, he'll translate it. And then two things. One, oh, well, I've got to do my part. I'm going to go search things out myself. So I started checking out uh, some of the local churches in that area, and... Uh, they had, I went to this one church and they had what they called testimony time. I didn't know what that was. And one by one, an individual would stand up and they would say, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is the one and only true church. And I thought, how do you know that? I'm not convinced. And I also went to them and they said, and I went to the Sunday school, and I said, I really want to know what you guys believe. And they opened it up to the Genesis and said, see here where Adam and Eve are tempted and they were offered this little reward that if you choose to disobey, you'd be rewarded, be rewarded. You'll be as gods. And they said, Jesus is just a little further along than you. You can be as gods. And I thought, me? I'm not God material. It's a red flag. <laughs> I don't qualify. So that wasn't it. I continued to search and the Lord came to me. That bus ride back and forth? Well, it was a real fancy bus. It's got like aircraft lights in the inside and fancy seats. And there was a guy on the bus. These are all Navy guys going to and from the site, reading his Bible, I mean, gold leaf Bible on the bus. And I said, are you reading the Bible on a bus? I mean, that was really strange for me because the... Bible was next to the encyclopedias, next to the dictionary, and the formal place in our bookshelf, and it's not something you read on a bus. 